Woo, what's going on? What's going on? Had a big fight last night. Um, Canelo did his thing against Smith. Um, I understand with some people, you know, they'll scream out, oh, you know, well, you know, Smith, he was the Ring Magazine champion and this and that. But the reality of the situation is those that know boxing understood that he never solidified himself in any way, shape, or fashion as, quote, the number one guy at 168 pounds or anything like that. You know, this wasn't a, this isn't somebody that would have been favored to beat Benavides. This is a guy that wouldn't have been favored to beat Plant. It just, it just, it is what it is. Um, he did pretty okay with the level of competition that he was faced against. And um, in his last fight, he looked, you know, he did look suspect. He kind of got exposed when it comes, you know, to a lot of things in this game. Um, but at the end of the day, Canelo did what he was supposed to do. He went in there. He just beat the bricks off that boy. You know what I mean? Um, the guy is very, very tall. He's really, really tall. He's physically a big guy. But physically, he's not strong. He's not somebody that's going to impose his will onto you in any way. He's not going to, even if you're in there making it a rough fight, pushing Canelo around, pushing his head down, you know, using even Tyson Fury type tactics, wrapping your arms around his back of his neck, just making things real rough and tough for him. <clears throat> he wasn't the type of fighter that could do that because physically just, he was, Canelo was able to move him around if he wanted to. So he physically wasn't strong like that. Um, punching power wasn't there. It wasn't there at all. There was nothing that he could land on Canelo in any way that would make him respect him. They'll make him back up in any way. Um, and the biggest thing, problem that he had is he has this huge reach advantage on Canelo. He has this huge height advantage on Canelo. But for whatever reason, this guy crouches down and brings himself down to the heights of the, the person that he's fighting. Why are you crouching down and bringing yourself to the height of Canelo? Stand straight up. You know, slight, obviously a slight bend or whatever because you have your leg split or whatever. Throw a stiff jab at him. Jab, straight stiff jab. Boop, straight right down the middle. Jab, jab, boop. There's no reason Canelo should be able to throw jabs and hit you on a consistent basis. That shouldn't happen. Canelo should have to move. He should have to figure things out, you know, make some kind of adjustment, slip punches, and then come and get you. Kind of like when Andre Wood was fighting Kovalev, and Kovalev didn't even have the type of advantages over Andre Ward that this guy had over, that Smith had over Canelo. No, he didn't have those, but he had to slip. He had to slip punches in order to get inside in order to land on, on um, Kovalev. You know, and obviously after the first fight, he truly learned from that. In the second fight, he was able to implement a game plan that we all know what happened in that fight. You know, he came out victorious, but Canelo didn't have to work at all. <clears throat> didn't have to work at all. You know, the guy just came to him. Let me crouch down and come to your height and then throw this little lazy jab that's not doing anything and allow you to hit me with all kinds of, you know, shots. You know, but at the end of the day, um, he was victorious. Uh, you know, Smith didn't really do anything that would make us want to see him again or think that he could do anything in a division whatsoever. It was super lopsided. And um, that was it. And, uh, you know, so basically, you know, the question about this is then, you know, what's he going to do next? You know, I've heard a lot of names being put out there. I'm hearing, you know, him fighting against uh, Caleb Plant, um, him fighting against, you know, um, Charlo, him fighting against uh, maybe even Earl Spence. You know, as far as Earl Spence, if they were to fight, you're looking at two years away. It wouldn't happen, I don't think, in 2021. 2021 is probably like a Manny Pacquiao, probably a Sean Porter rematch, that type of thing. And then maybe in 2022. And the same people are saying, well, what about, what about Terrence Crawford? Top rank, Bob Emmett have zero intention of setting up that fight whatsoever. Just with the way they flow, the way they move. Um, they're going to wait till um, Terrence Crawford is kind of long in the tooth and they have some young stud that's coming in at 147 pounds and they're going to feed Terrence Crawford to him. Just like they did Lomachenko uh, to Teofimo Lopez. It's going to be the same type of thing. Um, but we'll see. You know, um, we'll see what happens with that. Um, 
I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't think that fight's going to happen. So I think uh, and Earl Spence is going to be looking at other things. And one of those things is obviously it's going to be trying to do a Canelo, uh, trying to do a Canelo fight. But a lot of things could happen between now and then because I know Earl Spence probably going to end up moving up to 154, probably at 100, probably at 20, second half of uh, 2022. I'm thinking, you know, even though I don't think he should be moving up, you know, I think that's probably when he's going to move up to about probably the second half of 2022, and that's when he's probably going to be preparing if he can get one a fight against Canelo Alvarez. But I'm not sure if Canelo Alvarez will be coming down 160 pounds then, you know, by then anyway, you know. But we'll have to see. Now, the other guys out there, um, Caleb Plant, I don't see him fighting Caleb Plant, regardless of what they said before. Kind of seeing the moves and, you know, things that are kind of happening uh, with the WBC. Um, then we kind of heard that the WBC said that supposedly, you know, Canelo's, a, you know, now he has that W, uh, I think it's a WBA or w, whatever Smith had, belt Smith had. Plus, he also has now the WBC belt, which was vacant. But he has to fight Yildirim, I guess. The winner of that fight had to fight Yildirim, which means Canelo has to fight Yildirim now. Which, if he wanted to, I'm sure he could have gotten out of that, obviously, because they're doing whatever the hell Canelo wants. That means it's something. That means basically this is what Canelo wanted. He wanted to face that guy next. And if that's the case, then you know that that's you know him not again facing one of these top tier guys that we want to see him go up against. You know, at 168 pounds, we want to see him up against Benavides. We want to see him up against, um, we want to see him up against uh, Caleb Plant. And if he's at 160, we want to see him up against Charlo. You know, and it just, I don't believe we're going to be getting that next. And after that, I don't believe we'll be getting it after that. I'm thinking after that, he'd probably go after someone like a Billy Joe Saunders. And I think there's also the op possibility of him taking on um, a Can uh, Gennady Golovkin. Because his own still wants that fight and they want that fight bad for what? ever ass nine idiotic reason so i could see him working pretty much with the zone a lot over the next 24 months and him not sign a pbc deal him not sign a three fight deal and and really work with you know al Heyman and them that might not be happening at all you know i wouldn't be surprised or shocked at all because i think kind of you know with that whole wc wbc announcement i'm thinking what he's basically doing is trying to Follow the same blueprint that he had while he was with Oscar De La Hoya, except now he's going to be implementing it and not have to give somebody thirty percent of his money. He's going to be able to keep all that, all those additional funds, and he's pretty much going to be the boss of everything. So I think it's unfortunately, I think what's going to be happening is he's going to be taking the Oscar De La Hoya blueprint that they've set up for him, and he's just going to implement it himself. So. I'm going to go with, before I was thinking that, you know, maybe he'd be trying to get these belts after he got this unification, maybe take on a Billy Joe Saunders, then come back at the end of uh, next year, second half of next year, and take on a uh, Caleb Plant. But, you know, for Undisputed Bout, which he'd make a ridiculous amount of money doing. But I don't think that's going to be it. I think it's going to be Yildirim after that. It's going to be either um, Billy Joe Saunders or it's going to end up being Gennady Golovkin. Um, it's one of the one fights that the zone still willing to play a lot of money. So if they're willing to put up that bread, put up that 20 mil or whatever it is, 30 mil, especially if they're willing to put up that 35 mil for him to face Golovkin, then he'll do it. I think he'll do it. So we have to see what route he'll take, but don't see anything positive coming in the future as far as fans are concerned and what we want to see, you know, when it comes to him uh, and the opponents we want to see him face. But it is what it is. Like, subscribe, share, I'm out.